Hello and welcome everyone. In today's video, we're going to learn how to properly set up authentication in your app using AWS Cognito. We're going to set up all things we need using the serverless framework. This video is part of series where we're creating a note taking app, but don't worry if you missed any previous episodes. This video is perfect for anyone wanting to learn about Amazon Cognito. So let's dive right in. First, let's talk about why Amazon Cognito is so important and the benefits it provides. User authentication, which is about making sure your user are who they say they are, can be quite a challenging task. We have to consider uh, things like making passwords secure, setting rules for uh, passwords or implementing various uh, login methods, such as single sign-on, social media logins and multi-factor authentication. There is a lot of room for errors and any mistake could lead to the unfortunate consequences. This is why AWS Cognito is so useful. It simplifies the process of the authenticating the users. No longer need for keeping the user data in your own database. We can hand over that responsibility to AWS. On top of that, we can get a lot of options for how user can authenticate and we can trust that the service will handle any amount of load. I could continue discussing the advantages of using Cognito, but the true value will be evident when we see it in the action. So let's move right into the code. As in case with creating any resources within AWS Cloud, we first need to define it in the serverless YAML file. So let's open it up and search for resource section. Amazon Cognito operates on two main concepts, the user pool and the identity pool. User pools manage user profiles and authentication, while identity pools allows us to grant temporary AWS credentials to users, enabling secure access to AWS resources. Today, we'll leave the identity pools aside and focus solely on user pools. You can think of user pool as a directory in the cloud that lets you store and manage user profiles. First, we need to add the logical ID of the resource within the cloud formation template. I'm going to name mine Cognito User Pool. Next, uh, we define its type using cloud formation syntax. For Cognito User Pool, it's, um, it's equal to AWS colon colon Cognito colon colon user. Pool. After that, we can set up the properties of the resource. Let's first set up the name of the pool. Uh, I will set up mine to node app user pool. You will see this name in the Cognito service when you're logging into the AWS console. Then we will define the schema which represents all of the attributes we want to save in our directory. This could be anything, email, phone, number, address, and so on. In our case, we're just going to use email. We will also need to specify properties like attribute type, um, which is string, if it's mutable, and if it's required. Finally, Fully functional uh, user pool need to set policies. Actually, we just need one policy, the password policy. I will set the I will set the minimum password length to be equal to eight. We'll keep it simple for now, but in real world scenario, you might uh, consider making this policy more secure. Great, now that we have uh, user pool defined, we're halfway through. To interact with the user pool, we need to define the user pool client. Yes, that's another resource, but it's not overly complicated. We just need to tell the Cognito which application is authorized to interact with our user pool. Again, let's start by uh, defining the CloudFormation template ID. We can copy the previous values and change them a little. We have to add the client at the end. Next, we can move on to the properties. Firstly, we have to specify the client name. 
I will set mine to be equal to node hub user pool client. Next, we will set the generate secret flag to false. This flag tells the AWS Cognito whenever to generate a client secret for the user pool client. When to set to false, AWS Cognito won't generate a client secret. This is typically used for server-to-server -server communication. By not generating one, it indicates that the client is intended to be used with public clients like uh, web browsers or mobile apps. Next, we need to assign the user pool ID. Uh, for that, we can use the handy feature called ref to reference the pool ID without providing the full ARN. Finally, for the pool client, we need to set the auth flow. In this app, we will use user password auth, which means we expect uh, users to log in in our app using their emails. All right, that wraps up our discussion on resource definition. But before we will move on to the implementing lambdas, let's scroll up a bit to providers section. In the providers section, I'm going to add an environment property. Uh, this will add environment variables to each uh, of our Lambda functions. I will include two variables there, the Cognito client ID and the Cognito user pool ID. We will need both of these soon. All right, now let's move to the functions directory. I've added two more Lambda functions called uh, login and register. We'll begin our implementation with the register Lambda function. When you open the file, you will see some boilerplate uh, code. Firstly, I've imported the AWS SDK, then I initialized the Cognito client, specifically the Cognito Identity Service Provider. Then there is usual Lambda handler, where I've just added the try-catch clause for error handling. Let's consider a simple scenario where um, frontend sent us an email and password, and we can create a new user. Firstly, Firstly, we need to parse the body and then we can extract the uh, email and the password from that body. Then we can prepare an object containing the right input. I will name mine params. In params, we need to set the uh, Cognito client ID. We just set an environmental variable for that, so it's just straightforward. Then we need to set the user uh, passwords and username. Since we're identifying users by email, the username will be the same as the email. Finally, we have to set the attributes that match what we set in the serverless YAML file. Basically, we need to pass the email and its file. Now, let's move inside the try block. Uh, to register the user, we need to use the Cognitos uh, method called signup and pa pass there the params. Since uh, we're using uh, AWS SDK in version 2, we need to add a promise call at the end if we want to use promises. And just like that, we've set up the user registration. However, Cognito by default requires users to confirm their email by clicking the invitation link. Uh, we can set it to auto-confirm it, and I will show you how. Uh, we need to use the uh, admin confirm signup uh, method from Cognito. Now users won't need to confirm the email. This method requires the user pool ID and email of the user we're co confirming. But this call requires additional permissions. Let's go back to the serverless YAML file. In the providers section under the IAM role statement we need to add a new role statement. We need to add the action uh, cognito-idp colon uh, admin confirm signup. 
Also, we need to specify the resources that the action can be performed on. I'm going to copy the ARN now. Uh, remember, the ARN is standard way of naming and accessing resources under uh, AWS. Here we're pointing to the AWS Cognito IDP user pool uh, in our region under our account named uh, Cognito uh, user pool. We're also using uh, this sub function from CloudFormation. This function replaces the variables names with actual values. With this role, we're ready to register new users. But before we test it, let's implement the handler for logging in users. We'll test these two features together. Again, there is a lot of boilerplate code already in place, similar to a register lambda function. Our task is here to prepare the params and use proper uh, method from the Cognito package. To log in, in user, we need to specify the outflow. In the beginning, we decided to implement the uh, user email outflow. So that's what we have to set there. As with registration, we need to set the Cognito client ID. And the client needs to know to which pool it's interacting with. Finally, we need to set the auth parameters. For user password auth, we need to set the username, which is in our case equal to email, and password, which is simply password. To actually log in the user, we need to use uh, the Cognito method called uh, initiate auth and pass there the params. Also, don't forget to call the promise on that and uh, await for result and assign it to the variable. Oh, there is one typo. Let's fix it quickly. Okay. Uh, the response object contain all necessary tokens under the authentication result field. And that's what we will return from the uh, Lambda function will return response authentication result. Perfect, the deployment is completed and we can see all of the URLs printed in the console. Let's grab the endpoint for registering the user and then open it in the tool of your choice. I will go with Thunder Client extension for VS Code. As the body, we can set any email we want to because we set the autoconfirm flag on. This is the handy feature for testing, but I recommend disabling it in the production systems. Let's click the send button. Fantastic! The app responded with user registered successfully. Great! Now, let's copy the endpoint for a login in user. And let's try to send the same body. Great, the API responded we have a few tokens. Great. We have properly set the endpoints for registration and login in users. And all it took a just a few lines of code. Fantastic. Our users are now stored in the secure manner. But you may be wondering where exactly they are stored and how to use these tokens to validate this request. Well, one thing at the time. You can find all your users by opening the AWS console and searching for AWS Cognito. Then you have to identify your user pool. When you click on it, there is a section called users. As you can see, there is a user we've just created and it is confirmed. Cool. All right. Now that we know where the users are stored, let's tackle the question of how to secure the request using these tokens. In previous lesson, I showed you how to use MIDI to add middleware to our app. We'll be doing the same today. We'll add a new middleware that will check for the presence of the tokens inside the header and then validate it. In fact, I prepared uh, required middleware before the lesson. 
It's inside the utils directory and it's called token validator. Most of the code is what you would expect to see in the JWT validation middleware. There is just one addition to that, but let's take it one step at a time. Let's scroll to the bottom where I've just exported the authorize uh, method. It's typical MIDI middleware featuring the before phase. In the callback, I extract the event from the handler and then I search for the authorization header. If the header is absent, I throw an error. Next, I look for the bearer keyword. Again, if it's not present, it means the token is invalid and I throw the error. If the token header is valid, I can extract the token from it using the substring method. Then, I use the decode method from the JSON Web Token library. This decodes information from the token, but it doesn't verify its validity. I've decoded the token to grab the key ID from it. Normally, if we were building an authentication system from scratch, uh, we would know the keys used during the token signing. But in our case, we don't have access to private key used to sign the tokens. It belongs to the Cognito. However, thanks to the public key cryptography, we don't have to know the private key. JWTs are signed using private keys and the signature can be verified using corresponding public keys. Uh, so, our task is to obtain the public key and use it to validate the JWT authenticity and integrity. The key ID I mentioned earlier is used to obtain the public key. Let's take a look at the validate token method. I pass there the token and the key ID. Here I use the uh, JWKS RSA library to obtain the public key. JWKS stands from JSON Web Key Set. It's JSON data structure that represents a set of cryptographic keys, public keys, used for signing or encrypting JWTs and other security tokens. Essentially, it's just a standard for storing and retrieving the public keys. To initialize JWKS client, we have to know its URI. Again, it's standardized. All we have to know is the region we are operating in and the Cognito user pool ID. Then the JSON is present in the dot well-known directory in the jwks.json file. Then the rest is very simple. I've just used the uh, verify method of the JSON web token library to verify token. I also specify the issuer parameter during the JWT verification to ensure that the token was issued by expected Cognito user pool and not by any other party. This helps enhance the token security of our application by mitigating potential token forgery. Finally, I use the result of the validate token uh, function and I assign this, uh, this data to the event from the handler. This way, the user's data is available to each lambda. Okay, I hope this explanation is clear enough. The last piece of puzzle is to apply this middleware. Let's go and add this to the add node lambda function. Firstly, let's import the uh, required middleware. Then we can utilize it by adding the use, uh, use call to the MIDI chain. It's essential to add it in the right place. We want to validate the token before validating the request. In the previous lesson, we mocked the user email. Now we can finally remove this mock and use proper email. We can get the email by accessing the event.user object. We store the email address under the username so we can rename it to the user email to make it more meaningful. So that's it. We can test it out and again, let's deploy the changes first. Let's type sls deploy. Ok, after successfully deploying the app, we can test the endpoint. We will send the proper body, but without setting the token in the header. Let's see what will happen. Great, we receive 401 unauthorized status. Cool. Now, let's try to grab the token from the login response and paste it to the headers of the add node endpoint. Perfect. Now I can add a new node. 
uh, we should also protect the uh, delete node and get all nodes endpoint as well. I encourage you to do it by yourself or check it in the final code. Basically, it's the same scenario as in the case of add node endpoint. So that's it for today. I hope you find it useful and interesting. Now you know how to build basic authentication system using Amazon Cognito. In the next video, I will teach you how to use GitHub Actions to automate the deployment of the serverless app. So stay tuned. Meanwhile, thank you for the watching and see you next time.